long preserved for our walk in this world. They resound with Welcome to Thursday's Proverbial Wisdom. Yesterday we looked at lips and hearts. How our heart is revealed by our lips, by our tongue, by the things that we say and the things that we post. Today, as we pick up with Proverbs chapter 15, verse 8, we go through about verse 11. We see more about this and how God feels about these things. Proverbs 15, verse 8, beginning. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But the prayer of the upright is acceptable to him. The way of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. But he loves him who pursues righteousness. There is severe discipline for him who forsakes the way. Whoever hates reproof will die. Sheol and Abaddon lie open before the Lord. God sees the dead. But how much more the hearts of the children of man. Let's stop there. Solomon is saying the same thing that we know about God. It's the thing that that the prophet Samuel said about David. God looks at the heart, or, or God said to the prophet Samuel about David, God looks at the heart. Man looks at the outward appearance. Solomon is saying, God knows what's going on inside of you. And he can see inside of you. Yes, he knows death. He knows the grave. But even so much more, he knows your heart. And the way of the wicked is an abomination to him. The sacrifices of those who don't follow him are an abomination to him. Let, let that sink in for just a moment. Because what that's saying is that if I'm living my life in opposition to God, if I'm choosing to live in rebellion and do the things that I want to do, and then I come to church on Sundays and and I pretend like everything's okay, or I feel like if I just, you know, I can live how I want to, but I can confess and, and everything will be okay. That says he hates that. He hates that two-faced I don't know if that's a word or not. It is now. What God wants is a heart that is for him. Yes, you and I are human and we're going to sin. We're going to make mistakes. But there's a difference between a mistake, a misstep, a momentary lapse of, of judgment, and a lifestyle that says, I'm going to live the way I want to live and then God will forgive me. Paul would say it this way in the end of Romans chapter 5. Where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. And then he'll ask in, at the beginning of chapter 6, should we then continue in sin that grace may abound? By no means. Be that far from us. We shouldn't even be thinking that way. See, Paul is asking the same question or, or we're observing the same thing that Solomon is. If we are banking on grace, if we're banking on the fact God's going to forgive us so we can do what we want to do, we're missing the point. Because our heart is not following God. Our heart is then following the world and our misguided hope is in the graciousness of God. Solomon would tell us, Paul would tell us, others would tell us, that the way to God is a heart of righteousness, a heart that is dedicated to doing God's will. Will you be perfect? No. But will you be striving? As John might say, to walk in the light as he is in the light, having fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleansing us from all sins. What is the focus of your life? Yesterday we said, the focus of our heart is going to be revealed in the things that we say, the things that we do, the things that we post. God knows the focus of our heart. Even if we hide it from the world, 
God sees who we are and who we desire to be in our heart of hearts. So let me ask you, who are you in your heart of hearts? If you are trying to play the game of two worlds, stop it. That's not going to get it. Focus on God. Make Him the center, the source, the purpose of your life. That doesn't mean you have to be a preacher. You can be anything that's legal, moral, and ethical. But at the core of who you are, be a child of God. Be a person of God. Be a man of God who pursues righteousness and what is true and what is good. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, help us to get our heart right with you. Help us to learn to focus more and more on who we should be for you. And Father, when our heart strays, and sometimes they do, gently lead us back or directly lead us back to who we need to be for you. Father, thank you for that forgiveness. Thank you for the grace that we have in Jesus Christ. And it is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again for joining us as we have spent time in the book of Proverbs. I do look forward to these. I look forward to spending time with you. Until the next time we're together, my prayer is, as always, that God will bless your day. We have come.